You're watching Sunday Sound Off with D. Jackson, sponsored by Victory Four. Well, it's the Memorial Day Eve edition of Sunday Sound Off, the water cooler topics that keep on coming. And this week, the panel is chomping at the bit to get out here and tell you exactly what's on their minds. You know them, you love them. Sometimes you do anyway. <laughs> Let's start from left to right. He's back once again. I like to call him the Jackie Robinson of our panel, a true Sunday Sound Off pioneer, the Honorable Darren Smith. Well, D, look, I'm glad to be in the service one more time, and you won a rating, so I, I appreciate you inviting me back. <laughs> this guy is so full of himself. I don't know how you got past security, man. Center Square and the First Lady of Spectrum Sports, Ms. Kenitra Pulliams, and, uh, of course, always a pleasure to have you in the building. Thank you. I'm chomping at the bit to get, to get a hold of some of that ice cream that you guys were <laughs> enjoying earlier. You know, I jokingly said that you guys were going to be paid in ice cream, but, uh, you know, if you take me up on the offer, we've I got plenty. I take you up on it. Not a problem at all. And if you're keeping score at home. The man with the record for the most questions asked during the Chiefs OTA media sessions. Sports Radio 18 is Derek Hagelin. Derek, welcome back. What are your questions today? No comment. We're, uh, we're moving on. <laughs> Nothing wrong with that. And we are moving on with the show with our very first question of the night. We're talking Chiefs. Now this week the NFL made it clear players must stand for the playing of the national anthem. Now Andy Reid said he really didn't want to get into the issue publicly, but then word came out that Reed is endorsing a gubernatorial, a gubernatorial, I should say, excuse me, candidate. We asked, what's going on here? Is this a conflict of interest for Reed to hit the campaign trail? And well, as the Chiefs head coach, is this a conflict of interest? We'll start with you, Darren. What do you think? Well, you know, D, who am I to say it's a conflict of interest? That would be like saying the team released or traded a cornerback because his play diminished versus uh, protesting. So that being said, uh, I presume as long as it's not on company time, I guess they'll be okay with it. But the question that I would have for Reed is you're supporting a candidate that was a known birther. So with you having a team full of African-American, at least 70%, that's something that I would ask as a player for an explanation for. KP, what do you think? Is this a conflict of interest? I think it is, but I think people who support Reed or oppose players kneeling during the national anthem will say, well, Andy Reed is doing it while he's not at work. It's on his own time. It's in the evening. It's on the weekend. It's not, while, it's not during a game. Maybe they would take issue that. But I still think it's kind of that murky area where, you know, if the players – want to kneel shouldn't they have that right to do it because they're not people aren't coming to Arrowhead Stadium to watch the national anthem they're coming for the football game so Derek a lot of people are saying that the message has been lost in the whole national anthem protest thing and now they're talking about Andy Reid and what he does on his off time are we just making too big of a deal out of this or does someone need to be held accountable I don't think we're making too big of a deal out of it. The biggest question that I have is, you know, it's a lot of the fans that say against the players that kneel and against the players that protest, well, we don't want politics involved in sports, and that's exactly what you're doing while you're kneeling. But yet here you have a head coach in the National Football League who is openly going to be on the campaign trail, so to speak, for at least two appearances where the, the, the people who are going to be able to rub elbows with Andy Reid and this candidate are going to pay anywhere from five hundred to four thousand dollars. Now, that's not on the clock as the Chiefs, but we all know Andy Reid is the head coach of the Chiefs. It's just it's kind of contradictory and a big conflict of interest in my opinion. Now Derek you were at OTAs earlier this week we mentioned that and you got an opportunity to talk to Andy Reid and hear what his response was to this national anthem policy. He says it's going to be an in-house type thing. Didn't really care what the media thought or the public thought. Do you disagree with that or should he have made a statement saying what he thought about this national anthem policy? Well, I, I expected him and I hoped he and Clark Hunt would also issue a statement and saying like what the Jets did, saying, you know, hey, if any player gets fined for kneeling or protesting, we're going to pick up the fines. I just don't understand how you can say, hey, we're going to keep this in-house, which I understand if you want to do that. But as a head coach of a National Football League team, I do think at some point you do have to issue a statement to the media because we're kind of the liaisons to the fans. Now, Kanichra, what do you think about that? Should the Chiefs pick up the tab if these uh, players decide to protest? I, I think it would go a long way into kind of solidifying that relationship because nobody's asking my next door neighbor to come stump for a gubernatorial candidate or make an appearance. They're asking Andy Reid because of who he is, because of the name, because of the facial, facial recognition. That's why it is a conflict of interest. And so 
the Hunt family should kind of have their players back saying we support you in your civic endeavors and in your interest, your personal interest by saying, hey, we will pay the fine or better yet, have every player on the Chiefs roster, everybody take a knee and see if fines get handed down that way. Darren, what if they just put all the money in a big pot because they know they're going to do it anyway, do what they want to do? Would that be a better way to address the issue? And then everybody just pays the fine as a team. No, because initially, you know, the NFL thought that they could buy the players by, you know, donating $89 million in the civic issues. The thing is, all they had to do was just ignore they, the, the league and the owners rushed to try to put something out there to appease the president. And because of that, now they're going to be in a sticky situation. What's really happening is, is that the owners want to, you know, show that they are the ones that are in charge over the players as it relates to player relations and the owners. But at the end of the day, what is going to end up happening that is going to create a bigger storm as the season progresses and actually as, uh, as the season begins because now you're going to be having players questioning who's going to protest, who's going to be in the locker room, who's going to come out on the field, and then that within itself is going to cause division. Guys, I'm going to do a quick rush here, give you about 20 seconds to pop. Question number two, while the Royals have pulled out the big win this afternoon in Arlington, we know this is the rebuilding phase, but does that include the guys who call the shots? We asked, will this be the last year we see general manager Dayton Moore and Ned Yost together? We'll start in the middle with Kenitra. I think it will be. I mean, there were rumors that Dayton Moore was gaining interest from the Atlanta Braves to go back to Atlanta franchise to become their GM. And, and now Atlanta's certain, suddenly surging and, and maybe Mike Moustakis becomes their third baseman. And, and maybe, I don't know if Dayton goes back to Atlanta, but I think this will be the last year of Ned and Dayton together leading this organization. Is this the last hurrah, Darren Smith? Uh, yes. I'm just going you only got 20 seconds, I'm gonna say yes. Okay, Derek, let's move it over to you. What do you think about this tag team? I actually think they're both going to be back because I heard Ned Yo say just in fact a couple of weeks ago that he is leaning very heavily towards coming back next season. We know there was a little bit of tension between Dayton Moore and other people, including the Glass family, before the season started. But I think they've kind of cleared through those murky waters. And I think you'd be surprised. I'd be surprised personally if both are not back next year. We have cleared through the murky waters of the first part of the show. It's <laughs> halftime here. We're talking Bruce Weber and what's the legacy of Danica Patrick? You're watching Sunday Sound Off. You're watching Sunday Sound Off with D. Jackson, sponsored by Victory Ford. Oh, what a week it has been for K-State's Bruce Weber. He gets a contract extension, good to the year 2023. He's coming off an Elite Eight appearance and will have five starters returning next year. So we're asking the question, are K-State fans all in now, or does Weber still have something to prove in order to be accepted? Let's start with Derek. I think they should be all in on Bruce Weber. Obviously, he got the contract extension before last season. The buyout still remained the same. The buyout now has continued and will rise throughout this contract that he, this contract extension that he just signed on Friday. Look, Bruce Weber got to the Elite Eight. The Elite Eight is the Elite Eight. You beat Kentucky in the Sweet 16. They were a far more talented team than you. Yes, you lost to the Cinderella of the tournament in Loyola, Chicago, but this guy right now will enter the season tied for fourth on Kansas State's all-time win list with 117. If he's there maybe another five years and let's say he gets to over 200 wins which I think is reasonable to think over this length of his new contract that he's got he could move up to third all time in in wins at Kansas State by a head men's basketball coach I don't think he'll ever get to number one behind uh, I forget the name of who, who number one is, but they need to be all in on him. At first, when he got there, they weren't thrilled with him. Granted, has he had some, some years where he has not been as successful as you would hope or you think he should? He's going to have five starters coming back next year, every single starter on this team with Barry Brown coming back. This is a team that legitimately next year could contend for a Final Four as well as a Big 12 championship. And Kanitra, with Barry Brown making the announcement that he was going to come back this season, you have to think that that was music to Bruce Weber's ears, and that does help the fact that you know fans have something to rally around for next season. I mean, fans still want to wonder what if Dean Wade had been healthy in the postseason. You know, could K State have gone to the Final Four? Um, but to have the nucleus back is a good sign. I don't know. Yes, K State fans should be all in. But I don't think they will be. I think there's still those who just still wanted Brad Underwood to be the head coach and, and are still bitter about K-State not making that hire and Bruce Weber still being there. But, I mean, he's winning, which is what he's hired to do. Um, it may not be how K-State fans want it done, but the results are there. 
maybe they're just like their mother. They're never satisfied. <laughs> Darren, what do you think about this? Should these fans say, hey, we're all in with Bruce Weber, or does he still have something to prove? Well, they should be all in, but you got to understand something. K-State is considered the little brother to KU. First of all, they're not going to win the Big 12 championship anytime soon. They can't seem to win the Big 12 tournament, and we all know that they're not going to win a national championship. So they need to be satisfied with what they have. Bruce Weber is the best of what they're going to get right now. And that being said, I mean, like, like Derek has said, they're returning five starters. I mean, they could give Kansas a run for the money. They're not, but they could. <laughs> it's going to be fun to watch that team because it seems like they're going to pick up right where they left off and the sky's the limit. It seems like you always root for a guy like Bruce Weber. I wish him the best of luck. Switching gears, literally, Danica Patrick wrapping up her career today at the Indy 500. What will be her lasting legacy on the sport of racing? We'll start in the middle with Kenitra. Kenitra, what do you think about Danica? She goes out with a bang <laughs> by crashing out. And, you know, she kind of made her name at Indy and it was kind of the, the Danica double, you know, goodbye tour and it, it didn't bode well for her. She, her best finish was, was third and then, yes, yeah, she was the darling, you know, of, of Indy car racing and her best finish at Kansas Speedway was eighth. The most recent Kansas Speedway race, she did not finish. She crashed again. And so it was kind of like she was the nuance. She was the darling, but she was maybe unfulfilled. So now does she go the real from racing to reality show as Aaron Rodgers girlfriend? You know, we'll see what comes out of that relationship. She has been very popular over the last few years for maybe some of the wrong reasons. Uh, Derek, what do you think about her legacy? Well, I mean, I, I'm not opposed to if I go home and get to call Aaron Rodgers mine. I mean, <laughs> one of the best quarterbacks in all of the NFL. So I'd say that's a pretty good consolation prize for your racing career ending. Look, she never won at the level that, that people thought she would or, or maybe even expected. But I will say she transcended the sport of racing. She made a men's dominant sport have to sit back and say, okay, hey, maybe there are other people other than just men that can do a good job, that can drive a car, that can do the things that we do. Because before that, I think there was a lot of talk, oh, you know, a, a woman can't do this. And Danica showed, no, I can compete. I might not win at as high a level as what is expected out of me, but I can show you I deserve to be on this platform, which she definitely did for her entire career. And what platform is that going to be, uh, Darren? Let's, let's talk to you about, about what she's going to be remembered as the most. You see now, you trying to get me in trouble with our with our female viewing audience because kind of like what um, what Kenitra says, she's known for crashing more than finishing races. I think she's only won one race since she's been since she's been driving. So I'm not really sure what her overall uh, impact to the sport has been. And again, when you know when you're now more recently more famous being uh, um, uh, Aaron, Aaron Rodgers' girlfriend, girlfriend versus you know versus what you were able to do on the on the racing track i'm not sure what kind of legacy you're really going to leave behind well we're wondering what the legacy is going to be left behind here on the show especially after this panel i tell you what when we come back we'll get their final thoughts and it's kind of scary they get to say whatever they want to say uh -oh. and shout out to whomever they want to shout out you're watching sunday sound off this week we're in Hawaii spending two days with Laird Hamilton, the world's best. Well, the two minute drill is now in effect. Our guests get to talk about whatever comes to mind. Now, I got to let you know, this is totally unscripted, unrehearsed, unplanned. We just let them go. So we will start with Derek. Derek, what's on your mind? D, what's on my mind is a couple of weeks ago out at the Kansas Speedway when the race was going on, we, see, we saw Chiefs quarterback Patrick Mahomes decide to bring back the Jorts game. I ask you, I know I've seen photos of you on Facebook. I know Darius right now out in the lobby is currently wearing Jorts. Can we please stop trying to be like John Cena? Leave those things in the WWE. They are not meant to be worn in normal society, no matter what style they are. Jorts is not a good look. I realize there are a lot of people that thought Patrick Mahomes looked good. I'll admit he pulled it off. Could I pull that off? Absolutely not. But please, let's not rush to conclusions and think that jorts are making a comeback. That's the last thing anyone needs right now. Derek, you are now a part of the fashion police. So if Derek, if Derek sees you out there in jorts, he's probably going to write you a ticket. Kenitra, what is on your mind? Look, Derek, if you were making Patrick Mahomes money, you could pull it off <laughs> or at least <laughs> front like you could. My thing is Josh Freeman, uh, I guess his football career is coming to an end, recently retired from the CFL, was the 2005 Simone Award winner coming out of Grandview High School after throwing for 7,000 yards um, as a senior and played for five different NFL teams, was a first round draft pick and then just it never, he was never able to sustain kind of the level, the expectations. He had the, the frame, he looked the part, 
of a pro quarterback, but just never had the stats to prove it. 81 touchdowns in his career in the NFL. And so it'll be interesting to see what's next for Josh Freeman. Well, we wish him all the best, and it was great to watch him as a high school guy and uh, great to watch him in the NFL. Let's slide on over to Mr. Darren Smith. Well, D, one thing I, I don't do even on social media, I don't talk about my personal life, so this is the first time I'm actually going to open up to the public. But I do want to send a shout-out to my daughter, Taya Shelby, and her Park Hill crew for, uh, you know, killing it out of state. Taya won two state, uh, two state titles, one in the 800, beating a KU recruit. Uh, she beat them, and then she was a part of the team that broke the Class 5A record for the 4x4. So big shout-out to her mama, Kelly, her grandma, Eve, as well as her auntie, Janine, for doing a good job as, uh, you know, raising her up. So wanted to make sure I, I sent her a special shout-out. And since KU, M MU didn't want to want them to recruit her, we're going to take her talents to Vanderbilt. <laughs> well, I mean, you're doing it all. So now you're a, uh, an agent as well. You're, you're pushing that out to, to Vandy? No, no, no. She got a full ride, man. $70,000. Well, that's something to be proud of. Hey, no question about it. Got to come out of pocket. We're good. <laughs> hey, hey, congratulations. That is a huge accomplishment. And congratulations to everybody who fared well in all the track meets over the week as well. And, I, you know, I wanted to get back to you before we go. You talked about jorts. I wanted to know if Aaron Rodgers were wearing jorts, would that be okay? Because uh, it seems like you got a man crush on him. Um, no, that was, that was <laughs> no, not, not at all. If Aaron Rodgers was wearing jorts, I would absolutely say no. I agree with what Kenitra's saying. Hey, when you're, when Brett, you're making look, that type Brett, of money. Brett Favre wore them, and, and you saw Baker Mayfield and the tribute to Brett Favre. So, come I on, mean, If I want to see jorts, I'll just turn on, on Monday Night Raw and watch John Cena. Oh, boy. You guys, just whatever you want to wear is fine. Just do whatever you want to do. Jorts hey. for Memorial Day picnic. Go ahead. <laughs> it's going to be a fun picnic tomorrow. And if you're barbecuing, just send me an email. I'll be out there to pick up a plate. Or, or you can go to For Gates our barbecue. panel, <laughs> Darren, Kenitra, Derek, I'm D. Jackson. We want to wish everybody a great Memorial Day on Monday. Have a good one, guys. Take care.